Dan, what, uh, can you tell us your thoughts about what will be the impact of quantum computing on this issue? Sure, I can, I can maybe talk about that a little uh, briefly. But closer to your microphone. Yes, yes. Um, so uh, uh, can, I do, can we do a quick show of hands? Like how many people here have heard of quantum computers? Uh, oh, wow, not, not everybody. OK, so maybe um, quantum computers in one second. Uh, so all the computers that we have, what's running on your watches and your phones, these are classical computers. They're based on classical physics. The surprise is, it turns out that um, the world we live in is not a classical world. It's based on the rules of the laws of quantum physics. And it turns out quantum physic, physics experiments are difficult to simulate on a classical computer. This is something that was pointed out by, by uh, it was known a long time ago. Richard Feynman had this great idea to say, hmm, maybe there's actually more computing power that's available uh, using the laws of quantum physics. And it turns out that's actually true. There are um, problems that can be solved on a quantum on a computer based on quantum physics that can't be solved classically. There's only one problem, which is how do we build the darn things? Yes, so we, right now we have no way of, uh, of building them. So a theorist would say, well, that's just an engineering problem. Right? We have, we know the laws of physics are correct. Now it's just a matter of engineers uh, figure, figuring out how to do it. Um, in the past, I thought, you know, we're probably 100, 200, 300 years away of uh, having a working prototype. Uh, interestingly, just in the last couple of years, there has been uh, some very surprising breakthroughs in um, the technology that, goes, that would go into building um, a quantum computer. This came out of a lab in Yale. That lab at Yale actually has spawned labs at IBM, a lab at Google, and also a couple of startups in the Bay Area that are working on uh, building a working prototype quantum computer. And so I've had to revise like my thoughts about this. It's actually quite remarkable. Um, uh, design that's actually being proposed very different than what uh, what was proposed in the past And so now it looks like actually we're only a few years away maybe a decade uh, maybe a little more uh, maybe but uh, on the order of a decade from having uh, uh, Usable quantum computers now they have some impact on encryption So Iran Iran, Iran made the, the interesting point that data that you encrypt today could be recorded until such time that the encryption can be broken well, all the data that's encrypted today on the internet, all of it basically would become uh, completely readable and clear once we do have a large-scale working quantum computer. But to me, that's actually not interesting at all. That's, um, uh, the issue is all we have to do is basically throw away the existing uh, encryption systems that we have today and just use encryption systems that are secure even if the attacker has a quantum computer. And that's actually something the community is very active in. Um, you might be interested to know even the NSA is trying to move us away from the existing uh, systems that we're using into systems that are quantum resistant. They're also tracking these developments. They also see that maybe these quantum computers are not as far away as we, as we thought. Um, and so uh, that's not an interesting application of quantum computers because by the time they'll be built, we'll all be using uh, crypto systems that actually are secure against, the against these attacks. The interesting applications of quantum computers is they really do let us solve problems that we cannot solve on a, on a, on a regular classical computer. And so we're gonna be seeing a whole new, a new uh, a set of algorithms and set of problems, set of applications that can now be solved. And maybe I'll just leave you with a, a final thought that I honestly believe that maybe not my, my kids, but my grandkids pretty clearly when they learn to program you know, a prerequisite for learning how to program would be a quantum physics, uh, you know, a quantum physics class. So there's a lot of interest, you know, interesting times ahead, and uh, the world of computer science is never dull. There's always, um, you know, big developments on the horizon, and everything that all of us know might be completely obsolete in like 20, 30 years. Thank you. <laughs> uh, that was a, that was a, 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 a I guess I want to say a, a depressing thought, but that's the way the world works. Could be more depressing, Doctor. No, we still hope we will have grandchildren. <laughs>